What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and I'm joined here with Gersh One. And yes, we have a special guest. If you hear some critters in the background, we got another Nurgling in the building. Yep, same thing if you hear those hounds barking. It's the hounds. Uh, welcome to another episode of For the Greater. Whoa. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below, put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. That is what Jake Stallman did. Uh, I had a teacher named Mr. Stallman. He could jump on desks. Are you his son? <laughs> Anyways, uh, will the Adeptus Arbitus ever get their own codex? It would be awesome to have the Adeptus Arbitus have their own codex. If you don't know who they are, they're basically the police force of Warhammer 40k, kind of. Yeah, think Judge Dredd, but yeah, that's a good representation. Yeah, like they're for the planet, and they're a little bit above what a normal like police officer would be. The Arbitus really are dealing with like planet-wide uh, confrontations. Um, will we ever get a codex? No, the no. best thing we'll ever get is what we've gotten so far, and that's the kill. No, kill team. Necromunda stuff. Yeah, Necromunda. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get like special characters in that way. We might in the very, very far future. Yeah, we probably won't get an Inquisitor <laughs> codex. Or an Inquisition Codex. They, there was an Inquisitor Codex back in the day. Yeah, or I think it was like last edition. They have like um, some type of in Inquisitor something where the Sisters of Battle and like the Ecclesiarchy. The mm -hmm. I think the Grey Knights were even thrown in there. Yeah, yeah. So would they ever go back to that? I'm not sure. I don't really think so. But if they do, I think the Arbitus will be thrown in there. Yeah. Um, they're, I don't know. I feel like they're like similar to the... Um, Imperial Guard in a way, yeah. just a little bit more s special in their lore. But yeah, so you just get like special abilities. Yeah. So if if you bought um, any of the um, special, what is it called, the Blackstone Fortress stuff, each Blackstone Fortress member can actually be played on the tabletop. So if they do something like that, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, but next question. Okay. <laughs> this next one is by Reject X7. Are there pro sports in 40k? Or is war the only game that's played? Most of the time war is the only game that's played. If you if you want to dive deep, deep into the lore, um, uh, pick up uh, the old school Dark Heresy books. And they actually do have like different card games, uh, tabletop games, or, well... They have like uh, <laughs> like like games that you can because the Dark Heresy book is a role playing game, so just like D and D, D and D has like little games that you play or games that you can make up. And you can actually find that uh, in the Dark Heresies books. I don't know off the top of my head what sports they were, but they're there. Good question though. Yeah, but I feel like there's. I mean, depending on the type of world you're on, there's gonna be sports. Yeah. Or at least something for people to do. Yeah, because even in times of war, you still have like the Olympics going on. And that's like kind of like a rivalry between nations and stuff. So I'm pretty sure they got like rivalries between like the Southern Hemisphere of Katachan against, you know, the Northern Hemisphere. Stuff like that. Yep. Brian B. Do you guys think that Cypher is a loyalist, a traitor, a renegade, or anything in between? I think he's chaotically neutral, as a D and D player would say. Uh, he's kind of just in it for himself. Yeah, he's he's got his own agenda, and he'll use either side to get what he needs. Basically, yeah. Next question comes from Amos. Who was more powerful at their peak, the Eldar Empire or the Human Dark Age of Technology? Sounds like the dark. Dark Age of Technology had some insane devices that are way cooler than anything described in the pre-fall Eldar. Now, the Eldar Empire got it. The Eldar Empire, they, they didn't have to work. They didn't have to worry about food. <laughs> yeah. They were... They, what is it called? A self-sufficient economy? Yeah, they had. it was a utopia. There you go. Uh, so much so that that's why they went into chaos. Or not into chaos. They yeah. had so much free time and literally nothing else to do except... And kill each other. <laughs> That's Street, a... And if you read the lore, streets would run red with the blood of the slain. It's it's crazy. Are we horror? Like, how do you have children <laughs> in that whole situation? But maybe that's why they fell. <laughs> uh, next one comes from T Man One Eighty Three. Why doesn't the Imperium move to the center of 
of governance to Ultramar uh, at the off chance that the Emperor w were to die. Uh, kind of the same. We talked about this last week. You don't, like, when you're fighting a war, you're supposed to control your capital. If you move your capital, you're kind of already admitting defeat in a way. You're not playing fair. Uh, I mean, the Emperor is there. If the Emperor ever, if you leave the Emperor, you might kill him. Yeah, because he, he needs all that life support, uh, a.k.a. the custodes. Yeah. And the sacrifices. Because um, you got to have them cyber sacrifice uh, for, 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 for the betterment of the Imperium. That's like saying you're playing like checkers or chess and you're like, oh, I just took your king. No, I make this pawn my king now. It's yeah. like, that's not how the game's played. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Pineapple. Do you think the Wolfen curse might be overcome by the name character, kind of like the Black Rage? Yeah. It, yeah, whenever you add a named character to something, anything can change. There's a Dreadnought that has the Wolfen curse, isn't there? Yeah. And he's doing fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? I remember mm. the mono, I just don't remember. Yeah, I, I know exactly what it looks like, I just can't remember his name. It looks really weird. Mm hmm it's like a, got a little Sasquatch in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next question. Uh, this one is by Bradley Patterson. I'm building a rhino for my Dark Angel that's going to be magnetized so it can be played as a Razorback, Whirlwind, Predator, Stalker, Hunter, whatever I want. So my question is, I don't really want to kit bash and make twin assault cannons or flamers. Um, so... What's your question here? <laughs> so what do you do? Yeah. Well, if you don't, I mean, magnetizing it is the best way to go, and you said you're already going to do that. If you're saying you don't want to do that, um, or maybe, because I, I, I have to look at the rhino uh, sprue again, um, but maybe, like, you have to choose one or the other. Uh, go online, go on eBay, mm -hmm. and buy the pieces that you need, or that you're missing, and there you go. Yeah. And if you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You could always just, like, make it look, like you've said, or, like, later on. The rule of cool. If you want it to have giant missiles, put giant missiles on it. Just call it, oh, I'm using, you know, a flamer or a battle predator this time. Yeah, it's just, you know, you won't be able to play in competitions, right? Is that right. true? Tournaments, I think it's got to be what you see is what you get. But then again, if you're playing in competitions... Magnetization is key. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're doing, like, tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, and then when people talk about um, competitions, I'm pretty sure they talk about like the Vegas Open or whatever. Because if you go to your local GW store, most GW employees are really cool. They'll let you do pretty much anything as long as it's reasonable. So keep that in mind. Uh, proxying isn't that bad. Uh, next question comes from Kamina Sanchez. <laughs> Has the rubric of Arimon ever been created after its original use? So the rubric of Ariman is what caused uh, all those, what are they, Thousand Sons? Yeah, the uh, Flesh Curse. Yeah, so it was a curse that uh, inflicted all of these uh, space Chaos Space Marines, and then basically their souls were evaporated, and now it was just a husk, uh, and they're like automatons in a way. Um, has it ever been happening? Has it ever re reoccurred? I believe so, because... How would they replenish their ranks? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah. Not, not like, I can't point to a specific uh, spot. But then again, I don't play Thousand Suns, so I haven't read their codex. Sure. I actually wanted to pick them up for a while. Because I, I like the um, Egyptian-ish theme to it. It'd be 30k Thousand Suns, not 40k. Um, but... Maybe next time. <laughs> Would you go with the blue? Or the no, red? I, I'd always, it always, the red always pops to me. I don't know why, but I'm always drawn to like reds. Because they go faster. There you go. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Except if you're Sonic. Stufer 2002 when the big E was placed on the golden throne. <laughs> Squiggly beasts sometimes uh, are good for hunger. We'll, we'll use that as a uh, as a question. Yeah. Uh, if you're hungry in the War Warhammer 40k universe, 
You get Lunchables. You get Lunchables. <laughs> I wonder if they have. I wonder if 40k has Lunchables. They gotta have some type of like m packaged meal. Lunchables. No lunch. They do have. Um... Oh yeah, rations, right? For the yeah. Imperium. Like Imperial Guards gotta have it. I mean, not so much Space Marines, right? Yeah, Space Marines don't even have to eat really. They they uh. What's the longest that a space marine has gone without eating? I think it was like three thousand days. <laughs> Some something crazy like that. Yeah, sleeping too. They or if sleep. they eat, was it like if they eat a body part of something, they gain their memories? Yeah, they that is like super uh, interesting because it doesn't really come into the lore that much. Mm -mm. I feel like that was something that was that was a buff given to the space marines back in the day, and then they're like, oh, we'll, we'll just keep it in there. <laughs> but like now, it's if you notice. Most uh, chapters don't have that anymore. They don't have that, and they don't don't have the acid spitting thing. Right. Because yeah. if they spit, it's it's acid. You're spitting acid. But yeah. Anyways. Uh, Stufer, when the Big E was placed on the golden throne, and in the ye years his manlyhood was still intact, did the precursors of the Sisters of Battle and other concubines give him throne dome and maybe even golden showers? Ye. Yeah. Um, I don't think the emperor can use his think thing in no. the chair, because it's all bone now. Yeah, what's interesting is the, because I'm doing lore right now in the Sisters of Battle, and they're based off of, like, nuns in the Catholic Church. I don't want to make any generalizations, I don't want to make anybody mad, but it seems to me that the reason that uh, some women would go to become nuns, and this is why some men would become priests, uh, is because at some at a certain point the Catholic Church was really strict on like uh, being gay, uh, so like if you're a lesbian, it's better just to go into the church uh, and and kind of do your thing there, as as or because the other option would be to like fake a marriage, you know, be with a man that you don't really love. Yeah, you know, kind of like have your li live that part of your life secretly, but then at the same time, if you get caught in the church, like the it, yeah, it, yeah, it's a lot, yeah, it's a lot stricter. Like. It was worse for, of course, the nuns than the guys, because now we know what happens to the guys. They just get, like, moved around. But, <laughs> um, where was I going with this? I oh, know. oh. Uh, sisters of golden showers. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, so the whole point is I think that they are virgins. So, no, they would not. But you could imagine. You could pretend. If you're into that kind of... Would that be necrophilia? Well, I mean, Slaanesh is coming out with a whole bunch of models and stuff, so... Tis the season. Tis the season. By the time this video comes out, I have already put out a 40 facts on uh, a sister of battle that actually turned to chaos. And it was Slaanesh. Hmm. Uh, last question comes from Michael Grenick. Can you guys do more starship lore? Battlefleet Gothica Armada 2 is really fun to play and watch. But I'm left feeling like I don't know very much of the vessels in the game. Is there lore for that stuff? Or is it made up to give the game some depth? Uh, crude war spheres and Tyranid bio vessels. All of that it has lore. Um, the reason we don't really do Battle f uh, Fleet Gothic is because it's hard to find art for it. If I'm talking about a specific... Like, let's take your, your crude war sphere. If we're talking about the crude war sphere, we're going to have like a good... Four minutes of us talking about the lore. In those four minutes, I have two images to work off of. Um, that's just boring for you. Uh, anybody who like tunes in, it's not like our voices are all that great. Like you're really tuning in because of the image and a combination of the lore. Uh, so that's the, that's the big problem with starships. Uh, the lore is there. But the images aren't, I guess. Yeah, and that's the thing that kind of sucks, though, because, like, you can have a whole bunch of lore, like, for example, on the War of Heaven, but, like, since it hasn't really been played, talked about um, in any type of media, there's not a lot of art for it. So, like, you're stuck looking at, like, the same images over and over again. Yeah, the struggle of, of what we go through. Like, the old ones, you just have images of, like, what? Slam, which is... Yeah. 40 case or, or age of sigmar stuff yeah but even then it's hard because like whenever you look at an age of sigmar uh piece of art they're going to war too so they're fighting the storm cast eternals it's a 40k video and all of a sudden you see a storm cast eternal <laughs> yeah. uh that kind of throws you out of the immersion <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> and we're trying to be good dms for you guys um but yeah uh don't worry though um we're working on things we'll, we'll figure out something out um but yeah 
those are the questions for today. If you guys want more questions answered, comment down below. Uh, thanks for the support, guys. Don't forget we have a Facebook, Patreon, and Instagram. Twitter, too. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, keep those questions coming. This is the Sound Alchemist. First one. And we are out. <laughs>